Hello everyone, I'm really glad to be back. In the few weeks or months since I have last talked about CAN toolhead boards, the landscape has changed fairly significantly. Not only can you buy Hoovid 0.61 toolhead boards fairly easily through Luke's lab, you can also buy boards from Mellow and Big Tree Tech in both NEMA 14 and 17 sized variants. I'll probably have videos on those coming up since I have them coming in the mail, hopefully in the next few weeks. However, I did want to get a fairly comprehensive setup guide for the Hoovid 0.5 and 0.61 boards uh, with a WaveShare can hat because I believe that is still probably the most common uh, setup process. And there's enough little gotchas along the way that I figured it would be good to explicitly define every single step. So while this video isn't the most interesting, my hope is that as you are setting it up, you can follow along step by step and it helps you avoid any pitfalls along the way. Today we're going to get started with flashing a clipper onto a Hoovud 0.5 board. These instructions will also apply to the 0.61. Today we're going to be using the most basic method, which you do not need an ST-Link for. Um, it will require a few extra steps each time you want to flash the board, um, but it is the easiest to get started out of the box. For this tutorial, we'll need a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Pi 3B. A Hoovid board, I'm using the 0.5, but this also applies to the 0.61. A SD card for the Raspberry Pi. A boot jumper for uh, jumping across these two pins. A WaveShare can hat. A cable to connect 24 volts and ground, as well as the data lines to the Hoovid board. And in this case, I'm using a Raspberry Pi power supply. Since I'm not installing this in a printer, I'm just doing this on my desk. The first step is in this case, I'm going to install Mainsail OS. I'm specifically restarting from scratch just to make sure that there are no variables that I'm going to have that are different from what you'd have if you did these exact same steps. So first off, we're going to grab that micro SD card and insert it into a card reader or your laptop. Next, we're going to go to the Raspberry Pi website and download this fantastic Raspberry Pi imager tool. This is really great because it reduces a lot of the steps that you have to do. Um, and it just makes it really simple. We'll go ahead and open it. And in this case, Raspberry Pi uh, the Imager has Mainsail OS as an option. Um, if we go down to Other Specific Purpose OS, 3D Printing, and then Mainsail OS, and click right here. Then for storage, I'm going to click the 32 gigabyte device that I just put in. And before hitting right, I'm going to go to this gear icon, which is really awesome because this eliminates a lot of the complexity that we've had in the past. So in this case, I'm going to set the host name um, to something unique. In this case, I'm going to do uh, V1000 because this printer um, is V1000. I'm going to enable SSH. I'm going to set a username and password that is unique to uh, me specifically and I'm going to configure wireless LAN. This is really cool because in the past, whenever you did this, you had to go into a text file and change some things. And it was always a pain to make sure all the formatting was right, but this dialog box covers everything for you. So I'm just going to put in my network and then my password. Obviously update those for your specific network information. In this case, I'm going to set US for USA because I'm in the US and setting uh, my locale settings. Then hit save. After that, we can just hit write. And this will take a little bit of time. The window will pop up. We can close this out here. Just going back to this imager, we'll see it's writing. And we'll let this just keep going for a little bit. Now that this is done, we can go ahead and close it out. Now that the image is written, let's remove the SD card, insert it into the Raspberry Pi, and then go ahead and install the WaveShare hat, lining up the GPIO pins with the headers on the WaveShare. In this case, I have obviously bent my GPIO pins slightly, um, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult to insert but just use a kind of general pressure across to insert it fully. 
Once that's complete, we can go ahead and power up the Raspberry Pi by plugging in the 5 volt power. Now that the Raspberry Pi is powered and booting up, it will connect to our network and we need to locate the IP address. If you have access to your router and can just see what your connected devices are, you can figure out what the IP address is from that. However, if you do not, and you're on the same kind of sub network and network as your Raspberry Pi has connected to, you can use this Adafruit Pi Finder to do so. Um, so download it from this repository based on your uh, operating system here and extract the file and open the exe file, then we can say find my pi. This process will take a few minutes, but you'll get the IP address. Here we have found the IP address uh, of 192.168.1.9. Now that we have that IP address, we can go ahead and remote access the Raspberry Pi. In this case, we just do ssh pi at 192.168.1.9. And in this case, we get this failure because I have imaged this Raspberry Pi in the past and connected it with a dim different image. So Windows is saying, hey, something's wrong here, just double check. And so in this case, we can remove the offending key here, ssh key gen dash r. 192.168.1.9 and then we can go ahead and reconnect to the uh, Raspberry Pi. We will type yes and then we'll put in the password that we uh, designed or entered into the configurator for the Raspberry Pi imager and we're in. For this next step we need to configure that WaveShare can hat and I'm using the CANBUS documentation on the Clipper3D.org documentation website. The first step is to add the CAN interface to this address here. So we're going to do sudo nano etc network interfaces dot d can zero. And then we're going to enter the password and then we're going to copy this text and then right click and paste and in this case I'm going to use a 250,000 instead of 500,000 you can use either way but I just have 250,000 because it's a slightly more reliable so I'm going to do exit Y for save and enter to save it there and I'm just going to go back and run that same command again just to make sure everything updated properly and it did so that's great um, so now we can do uh, exit. Next we need to make a change to the config.txt and we'll go there. And this is the can hat I have. The model that I have has a 12 megahertz crystal on it. If you can see right down here it says 12 and that means we can use the 12 megahertz option. If that said 8 on it, 8000, then we would use the 8. You can jump back. So in this case, we're going to do sudo nano boot config.txt. And here we have a bunch of options. We're just going to scroll down to close to the bottom. It's easy to want to paste the values here, but that actually puts it under the pi02 header, which we don't want. We want it under this all header. So I'm going to move the cursor up to right here. And I'm going to copy uh, this line and then I'm going to right click to fill it out. It looks a little funny there but there's just a lot of text so it's hiding part of it but that's good. We're going to do control X to exit, Y to save and enter. And we're just going to double check again to make sure that everything looks good and yes it does. So we're going to exit control X and that section is done. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and restart the Raspberry Pi because the CAN interface while we have set it up hasn't been initialized yet. So what we're going to do is go over to the web browser. We're going to put in our password or our uh, IP address 192.168.1.9 and this will pull up the main sale web interface. So here it's throwing errors because we haven't configured everything properly or we're just going to 
to go to this icon here and then hit reboot. There we go, it's letting us enter the password. And now um, we want to do one more command, which is IP space ADDR space list. And this allows us to see if our CAN interface is properly working. And in this case, um, you'll see this. This command shows that CAN0 is up and it is interfacing properly. If it says like uh, CAN0 is down instead of up, that means it is not. Next, we want to go ahead and make sure that Clipper is up to date before we flash the Hoovit board, because if it is not and we update it later, we'll have to reflash the board. So in this case, I'm going to click Update All Components. And this is going to take uh, quite some time to do, so we'll sit back and speed up through this. Now that the CAN interface is working, we need to create a clipper.bin file for the Hoovit board. So we'll go CD Clipper, and then Make Menu Config. Here we're going to enable extra low-level configuration options. We're going to go to the STM32, F103, bootloader offset of 2 kilobytes. Clock reference is 8 megahertz in this case. And the CAN bus of PB8 slash PB9. Here, if you've used 500,000 in your rest of your configurations, that's fine. Um, but in my case, I use 250, so I'm going to update this. Then we'll press Q to exit, Y to save, and then make, clean, and make. While that is building, I'm going to jump over to the top camera. And in this case, we need to go ahead and get the Hoovid board ready to go. So I'm going to grab my jumper here. I'm going to put it across these two pins right here. That will put the unit in DFU mode so we can flash it. Then I'm going to go ahead and connect a USB cable to the Hoovid board. I'm also going to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. And then finally, the last step is I'm going to grab this connector here, which has 24 volts in ground, and I'm going to connect it to the Molex pin. And you can see here that this blue LED is blinking. It's actually blinking a lot faster than the camera can show up, um, but this means that it is in DFU mode and it is ready to flash. Jumping back to the screen, we can see that we have built this Clipper bin file. And so now we're going to go ahead and figure out which commands we need to use in order to flash it. If we open up a new page and go to Clipper tool headboard, we can go to Bondus' page here and uh, Clipper configuration. And then we have make flash flash device equals 1209 colon biba. So we're going to just copy this command and then right click to paste and then enter. Here we enter our password and there it's flashing. It's going to fail uh, rebooting the MCU, which is completely fine, but let's go back to the top camera. And in this case, I will disconnect power. I will disconnect the USB. I will disconnect the boot jumper. And then we can uh, connect it back. Like that. The only thing we have to do left is uh, connecting the CAN wires from the Clipper toolhead board uh, to this device, uh, the Raspberry Pi CAN hat. So to, before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the devices, which I probably should have done before. <laughs> Sudo shut down H now. And uh, once all of the LEDs have stopped flashing, um, right um, here, it's still uh, shutting down once that goes dark. Okay, that's good. We'll go ahead and disconnect power and disconnect power. 
And then in this case, we want to connect uh, the two wires on the bottom of this connector here to H and L here, which are CAN H and CAN L. Now that I've connected the CAN wires, I'll go ahead and power back the Hubud board and the Raspberry Pi and wait for them to boot. Now we go ahead and do SSH Pi at 192.168.1.9 enter in our password and then in this command line we need to pull a line out of the CAN bus uh, configuration guide. Um, this right here, we're just going to click copy then right click to paste. And here it's found the CAN bus UUID, which is right here. Now that we've discovered the CAN bus UUID, I just want to take one more step before we wrap up this video and show you that it does get detected by Clipper. So I'm going to create a file called printer.config. Again, your printer will likely already have one of these, but just for an example, I'm going to paste some values in here. We've defined a controller called MCU. If this is your second one, you would say MCU like Hubud or something like that. But since this virtual printer I'm creating does not have any other MCUs, I'm just using that. CAN bus UUID, and this value is copied directly from the uh, command here. And then in this case, because I'm not actually connected to printer, I'm just defining a kinematics none. So we'll save and restart. And we'll see here that we detect both the host, which is the Raspberry Pi, as well as the MCU, which is the Hooven board over CAN. So everything is functioning properly now. The final step to configuring this and getting your printer running is like any other controller you have in Clipper. You need to define the pins that are tied to certain features. And so those references can be found here on this repo. For the original 0.5 board, we can look at pinout and hookup and reference these pinouts right here. However, they are not valid for 0.61, which is the latest version. Um, so you can check a pull request or other documentation here that is waiting to get updated, but there's various pinout uh, values here. Um, so you can also look at the schematic, which is really useful as well to find all the different values that you would need to set up your board. And that's it. I hope you found it useful. Um, I really love CAN boards, and even more so, I have a new video that will be out in a little while where I go through this exact same process, except I update the bootloader on the Hooved board to the CAN bootloader by ArcSign. This got merged in maybe one week ago, and it's really exciting because it allows you to update the CAN application on the board over CAN bus. So no more needing to connect a USB port uh, or plug in the uh, boot jumper or anything like that. It's all automated. You send one command from the command line. The uh, board goes into the bootloader mode. It updates the application, exits bootloader, and your printer is back ready to go. So that's a really big quality of life improvement, but it's a little bit more complicated. So I wanted to get this baseline video out first. Um, so expect that here in the future. I hope you have a good one.